The purpose of these steps is to install the 2811 router and the 2960 switch. Prior to removing any cables, take a digital photo and be sure to wrap a piece of tape around the cable and label the cable old switch port on it with a permanent marker to simplify rollback. Your store manager should have cleared some space for you for the router and switch. Ask the manager where this is located. If they did not clear any space, you then need to take a few minutes out of your time and do so. Find a spot near the current router and switch. Once the spot is clear, unpack the 2811 router and the 2960 switch. Save the boxes so it would be easier to wrap up and make everything clear. Make sure all hardware in the boxes is included. Remove the current 1711 Remove the RJ45 connector from the management PC and insert it into port 11 on the new 2960 switch. This cable should be brown, but we are using a black one. Alright, the purpose of these steps is to provide instructions on how to physically install the wireless access point. The mounting process is simple and requires common tools. The access point mounting plate is designed to accommodate multiple mounting methods. Locate the Cisco Aeronet 1130G from the pre-conversion activities performed during the arrival and unpackage the device. The device is powered over the internet so the power supply is not needed. Before physically installing the access point, open the cover. The cable should the cable installer should have left an orange cable dangling from the patch panel labeled cap. Remove this cable and attach one end to the aeronet switch in port 16 or 18. The lights of the Cisco enable on top should turn green. Connectivity may take up to five minutes. Skip number 17 and 18 mounted the access point. Test procedure, ensure the knock engineer has ping connectivity to the device while it's locally connected to the switch. What you need to install is the mounting bracket, two wall, two, two wall screws, wall anchors for the screws, and the security clasp. Using the mounting plate as a template to mark the locations, the two mounting holes labeled with an X and the location of the cable access. Drill a 3 16th inch hole at the X mounting hole locations you marked. Insert the wall anchors into the mounting holes. Great. Go ahead. Line up the keyholes to the provided notches, making sure everything's matched up evenly. Kind of jimmy it around, push it down so it snaps into place, and you're good to go. go ahead. Now using the key ports, line up everything, making sure it snaps into place. Take your rest of your cord, go ahead and install your adapter. Secure your cable using your security screw, the smallest one, find the hole it should go into, drill that up there, which is that guy right there, drill that in, put your security clasp right into place, making sure it snaps, and that should be it. And I basically said that if you don't get this screen, then just skip to the skip to sex, uh, step six, mm -hmm. which is here. All right. So once we, since we're going through the directions, once we get to this step, um, we say hit function, hit the function key, which is indicated right here, and, put, and press three. That's going to prompt you to this screen indicated here. 
Um, again, we're going to hit we're going to hit function and then and then zero, which is F10, and that's going to take you to the terminal config screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I left a note that if you if you do not touch, if you're probably reading, it may power down. You know, within like you know five five or ten seconds, um, power it back on. You should be back to the same screen. Okay. Um, so so you see the terminal IP screen right here. Uh, it has the terminal IP, which, which we've defined as the IP address of this device. It's got the server IP, which is the IP of the register. If you're not touching that. I get explained in there. As you can see, it went off. Um, and then if you arrow down, it has the subnet and gateway um, that will be changing. Is that a DHCP? No. no. These are statically defined. Okay. All right. So terminal config screen next step is to go to once once uh, once you locate the, the piece that you want to change the parameter it'll be highlighted so that you'll know that you're on that step um, I say hit the clear button to clear it out all right that'll that'll clear this and then we're just going to simply key it in the address is going to be 192.168.0.4 through 10 all right sequential order again um, if they have more than one, you'll have to go four, five, six, and seven, and so on. All right, so let's just use the first one identified as four, 192.168.0.4. Uh, okay. And after that, you can go ahead and arrow down. That's now taken. Okay. Scroll down using the up, 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 down arrow, and it'll go down to the subnet gateway screen. And scroll down a little bit here. Again, same process. Hit the clear button. Hit the clear button when you get to the gateway. Um, go ahead and put in the gateway as 192.168.0.254. Subnet mass is going to be. 255, 255, 255, zero. Not, not as much of the same concern on this guy as the, as the um, AP, <clears throat> all right? So once you have your parameters set, these are the similar parameters that we use for the wireless access point to communicate. Um, now what we want to do is, is hit function F3, function F3 to save, I'm sorry to exit. It'll save the config on exiting. And then it'll, it'll go through the regular boot sequence, which I haven't defined there. I don't think that's a big issue. 